I've been teaching my 10-year-old son what it means to be a young man. And there are different years of his life that we've kind of done this. When he was an infant, he had a pacifier. So there was a time where we, we graduated the pacifier and I had to sit him down and say, hey, look, we're going to tie this pacifier to the balloon and it's going to go off somewhere. <laughs> okay. And you will go to sleep. <laughs> you will go night, night. And um, I'm joking. And... And uh, it helps them to understand we're moving from the infant stage to a toddler stage. So he's a toddler. Then um, I recognize, you know, he's in the fourth or fifth grade. He's probably hearing a lot of things. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to take him out to the woods. And no, <laughs> let me finish the story. <laughs> finish the story. We're going to take him out to the woods at a Christian camp. And I'm, I'm going to have talk. <laughs> so we took him out. My wife's like, isn't he too young? It's like, no, he's not too young because I, what I don't want to happen is the culture to define things in his life that the Bible doesn't define them by. So we're going to put the Bible in his heart before the culture tries to undo this. So we lay down the foundation biblically and now we're going through this weird season. Here's what I'm teaching my son now. Two simple things. Son, you're going to have to recognize that life is hard. And nobody can escape pain and suffering in this life. Buddy, you'll go through broken relationships. Son, you'll go through people hurting you. Son, you will hurt people. You'll have pain come on you that you never saw coming. Um, you are not owed anything in this world, son. Nobody's going to feel sorry for you. If you want something, you go get it yourself. I'm trying to teach him how to get this warrior mentality in him. And I say, but while life is hard, son, you also must know that God is always good. God is not 98% of the time good. God's not 99.9% .9 of the time good. God is always 100% good. So son, we have to reconcile these things in life. So here's what I began doing. I thought, we can bond over watching movies. Movies that depict an underdog story. Someone who wasn't given anything, had pain, persecution, went through ups and downs, but kept fighting and they were victorious. Don't you guys love those kind of movies? Bless you. So, <laughs> so we sat down and we watched the movie Elf. I wanted him to see how Buddy the Elf had a hard time, but Buddy persevered. That's where we started with Elf. Then, last night, he got introduced to Rocky. Now this is where he, yeah. My wife is sick today. She does not know that I introduced him to Rocky. So honey, I got this, let me do what I do. So we sat down and just he and I, and we looked at a bunch of Rocky clips. And it's just like Rocky and Apollo Creed, just, you know, they're going back and forth. Rocky's up, there's up and downs and there's, there's blood and there's, there's all this stuff. And I'm like, what do you think, son? He's like, I want to punch somebody. I'm like, no, 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 no. Hey, when I'm not trying to get you to go fight in school. I'm trying to help you to understand that Life is hard, but you can persevere and be victorious, okay? That's what I'm trying to help you understand. So we're watching these movies, and then you've heard Rudy, the movie Rudy, you know, this athlete who is just, you know, he's grinding. If you're an athlete, you know, the, the grind, the you don't want anything given to you, you want to earn your spot, and that's what I'm teaching him right now, earn your spot in club baseball. So there's all these great conversations, but in the grand scheme of things, this is silly, but it's, it's doing two things. We're bonding together talking about movies, but at the same time, I really do want to raise up a warrior who understands that although this world is broken and this world is hard and you can't escape pain and suffering, that God is still good. I want him to understand, see, 
Rocky, I've seen a thousand times, and no matter how many times I've seen it, I'll watch the entire two-hour movie knowing he's going to win at the end, and I will still get emotional throughout the movie. It just has me a certain kind of way. I cry every time in the notebook, and I know what's coming. I know what's coming. You would think that me knowing how it ends would change how I view the movie. You would think me knowing how this ends would change how it dictate, dictates my emotions. Paul today is going to tell us, you're going to face a battle in this world and it's going to be hard. There's going to be pain and suffering, things you didn't see coming. You will do things you didn't know you were capable of doing. But then Paul says this, while this is a reality and this is the movie of your life, there is good news. I can tell you how this ends. And he says the good news of how this is going to end is this, that you are more than a conqueror. The good news is that while you are fighting, you are not fighting for victory, you are fighting to victory. The score has already been set, the book has already been written, the movie has already been produced. At the end, God and his people win. So what Paul is trying to help his readers understand is that still there's a fact of life. Life is hard, but God is good. Life is hard, but God is good. So watch this battle that he helps them to see in Romans chapter 8. He begins to ask these rhetorical questions. And these rhetorical questions are the reality of the battle of this life. So in other words, he has given them the battle in life. He's given them a cheat sheet, things that they're walking through. And here's the question that he asks, who shall separate us from the love of God? And he goes through these things, shall tribulation, a distressed soul, should, should persecution, so famine, should nakedness, danger, or sword. So any of these things separate us from the word of God or from the love of God. And so he's telling them, you will go through tough times. You will go through a battle. You will go through tribulations. The battle is real. The battle is real. You have heard, Christians, that God has a plan for your life. And that is true. But you must also know that Satan has a plan for your life too. And there is a real battle and it, he wants to come for you. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. He wants to discourage you when life is hard. He wants to whisper in your ear that God is not near. He wants to tell you that you will never overcome what you're fighting. He wants to tell you that you will always be a victim. He wants to tell you that God is nowhere near fighting for you. He wants to tell you that God is not listening to your prayers. There is an enemy and he is real and he is fighting this battle. But the good news is he's already lost it. All, can, all he can do is disrupt us. All he can do is be a thorn in our side. All he can do is whisper lies. And he can do a lot if you let him. But the key is you don't have to let him. You don't have to be a victim to his lies. You don't have to be a victim to him reminding you of your sin. You don't have to be a victim to anything the enemy accuses you of. Because according to my word, it says that now, therefore, anyone in Christ, there is no condemnation. That means there is victory for us. It doesn't mean that we're not held accountable, but it means that we can walk victorious. So what Paul is saying is there will be a battle and the battle is real. And there are going to be times where you are hurting and there are going to be times where you're questioning God. There are going to be times where you are frustrated. And there are going to be times where you're just so discouraged. And there are going to be times where you go through depression. There are going to be times where you have anxiety. There are going to be times where you can barely pay your bills and you're wondering where God is. There are going to be times where you can't find a job and you don't understand because you've been so faithful. There will be times where you are walking this life of loneliness and you are desperately wanting a spouse and there is not one to be found anywhere near you. There will be times where you question God's love and God's plan for your life. Life. That is the reality of the battle. If that was it, that'd be pretty discouraging. But Paul doesn't stop there. He wants to get into their souls. He wants to get close to them to let them know, I understand what you're walking through and I understand what you're feeling. And I also understand that it's not going to stop. So let me remind you of something while you're fighting in this game of life. Let me give you some encouragement of how this thing ends. I understand that your story is still being written. 
but God hasn't stopped writing. So let me go ahead and fast forward this and let you know how this movie is going to end and how the book of life is going to end. And here's what he says. Will any of these things keep us from the love of God? A surpassing no, 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 no. And all these things. So I want you to tie the word all these things. Everything I just said and listed. All these things. Not 99%, not five out of six. All these things that he talks about. All these things. We are more than conquerors. This word conquer in the Greek is Nikea. It's where we get our word Nike from. Why are you shaking your head? It's just the Greek. It's where we get our word Nike from. I wasn't joking. This word conquer, I think you thought I was lying. I was serious. (laughs) She's like, he's tripping. No, it's where we get it from. This word conquer is where we get our word Nike from. In the Greek, it's Nikea, Nike, it means victory. But it's more than just a victory, it's a surpassing victory. It's one that wasn't even a close game. So, right, all these things we are more than. What Paul does is he gives a compound word, which is hypernikia, or hupernikia in the Greek. Here's what it means, a surpassing victory. A surpassing victory. Like you didn't, God didn't barely beat Satan. God destroyed Satan. God obliterated Satan. God didn't barely win. God won by a lot. And the battle is already done. It's already set. So what he is telling the readers here is, look, in all these things in your life, what you have to remember while the battle is real and the battle is true, God has already declared the victory. God has already declared the victory. God has already declared the victory. That's to change the way you walk and live life. That means that as a child of God, you should not live as a victim. Because children of God, of the Most High, of the Creator, of the Victorious, are not victims. Children of the Most High God are victors. Does it mean that you won't experience pain? Oh, you will experience Does it mean that you will not come across illness, cancer, depression, and anxiety? It will come because of a fallen world. But it does mean that in the midst of this brokenness, in the midst of this turmoil, in the midst of living in a fallen world because of sin, that you can grab hold tight to his word and that you know how this thing ends. You may not like the journey, but it doesn't change the destination. So what he's saying is this. You may not like the journey in this place. You may not like the pain. You may not like like what comes. This is the journey. But let me tell you something. No one can change the destination. Because God said, it is said, it is done. We are more than conquerors. So we can claim that. Does it make us escape trials? No, no, no. It gives us strength and hope in the midst of them. Gives us strength and hope in the midst of them. Surpassing victory. Let me break this down with an Old Testament story. You may have heard the story of David and Goliath. Do you know that Goliath is a result of the Israelites not being obedient to God? And they should have conquered the the people group that had never conquered. Therefore, Goliath became a thorn in their side. So here comes Goliath, had the people of Israel terrified of him. He was this big bully. So David comes up. David comes up in 1 Samuel chapter 17. He says, I got this. I fought lions, I fought bears, I fought everything, and my God was with me. I got this. See, David's strength wasn't in himself. David's strength was in, was in his God. So when he said, I got this, God did it once, he can do it again. David comes up in front of the people and says, hey, I can take down this Philistine because he is uncircumcised. I'll explain. Circumcision in the Old Testament meant that you had a covenant with God. If you had a covenant with God, it means you could be confident in God. To have a covenant with God meant that you were covered by God, meant that you were protected by God, that you were strengthened by God, that you were provided by God. It meant that you can sit under his covering and protection. So David had been circumcised. He had a covenant with God, so he had confidence in God. 
He saw that the Philistine Goliath had no covenant with God. He was not circumcised, so he had no confidence in God. So when David stood and fought Goliath, you know the story, through the stone, Goliath Goliath falls down, but here's what he does. He doesn't just let him die. He wants everyone to know that this guy will never revive himself. David gets over Goliath, chops his head off, holds the head up high to say, victory, he is not coming back. This was a foreshadowing of surpassing victory. The Israelites in this, this whole story is we were the Israelites, scared, had no power to defeat Goliath. David was Jesus, who stepped up on our behalf, had confidence in his father, took down Satan, and death has lost its sting. And Jesus didn't only barely kill Satan, defeat Satan and sin, but Jesus won with a surpassing victory. This whole picture in the Old Testament is what Jesus would do to the power of sin and death, that death will lose its sting. It is done. It cannot revive itself. So when Paul is saying we are more than conquerors, here's what he's saying. You will still feel it, but it won't have the same power. You will still feel it, but it won't have the same destination. You will still experience, but it cannot take you away from who God says that you are. You are more than a conqueror. At the worst case scenario, your life is taken and you go to heaven. That's what Paul is saying. So you can walk with confidence because it changes absolutely everything. You are more than conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. When I played basketball in high school, I'm just going to be honest, I was a punk. I talked a lot of trash. And um, I still talk trash today, but I do it in a Christian way now. It just, my mouth just goes and it just goes and it goes and it goes on the basketball court. I've always been that way. And I'd get get myself in trouble in basketball games. In high school, I was ejected out of so many games because I would hear what people would say in the stands and I would literally take a shot, turn back and find the parent who said it and start talking to them. (laughs) Or I would go in front of the opposing team's bench. I'd shoot a three. Make it, turn back, and start saying, that's why you're sitting on the bench, buddy. Keep talking, and I'd run off. (laughs) I just talked a lot of trash, but I wasn't saved. I wasn't a Christian. And I remember one game, we're winning by a lot. We talk about a surpassing victory. It was a surpassing victory. And the way I was wired, um, you know, you're up by 100, and it's like 120, and the other team has like 20. And it's probably time to let up. I, didn't, I, don't, I don't like letting up. I'm like, no, we're the same age. We're going to keep going at this thing. And so I, I, told my, I was like, coach, I don't want to come out. I want to keep playing. I want to get a um, career high scoring here. I'm going to keep going. And um, so I'd stay in the game. And I'll never forget. And I'm not kidding. It was, this is a true story. It was the fourth quarter. And we had about five minutes left in the game up by about 100. That's no joke. And my coach um, kept trying to say something to me. And I was... I was in the middle of still talking to my opposition. The guy guarding me just kept talking trash and he was getting under my skin. And then the referee had to stop the game, start talking to us both. And then that just really got me charged up even more. So my coach called a timeout because I would not shut up. I just wouldn't stop. And so my coach pulled me aside and said, what are you doing? I was like, he won't stop talking and I'm going to shut him up. And he was like, look at the score. You've already shut him up. I was like, no, I don't care. He won't shut up. He's like, he's already lost and you're letting him get under your skin. Look at the score. So I got back in the game and it changed everything. I was like, you're right. I'm like doing half court shots, not even looking like it didn't matter. It just didn't, it didn't matter much. And so the, we got back in, the kids started talking trash to me and it was awesome. I feel like I grew so much in that moment. I just said, scoreboard. <laughs> and then he kept going. I was like, buddy, scoreboard, you're down a hundred. And we, he kept scoreboard. And when the parents would say, scoreboard parents. And I'd tell the kids on the, I'd said, that was, that was all I said for the rest of the game for five minutes long. The last five minutes of that game changed my perspective, changed everything. 
because I knew that the victory was already on the board. So why am I letting this guy hinder me? Paul is saying, look, Satan will whisper, Satan will try to hinder you. But if you stop and pause long enough, listen to your coach. Scoreboard, it's already done. It's already done. It's already been written. You don't have to let it trip you up because you know how this is going to end. This is exactly what Paul is trying to say to us. Listen, you are more than conquerors. Scoreboard, it is done. It is written. So when you get in this season right here, don't you get in a fetal position and don't you become a victim. Change your perspective and recognize that you can still walk with confidence in the midst of your pain because we are more than conquerors. You may not like how it's being written, but I promise you the end result will stay the same. You may not like the journey, but the destination is still the same. We are more than conquerors and Satan has lost his sting. Do you understand how that changes everything? Before I was a Christian, man, I was terrified of death. And I was terrified of death because I didn't know where I was going when I was going to die. When I became a Christian, still don't want to die anytime soon, but I walk differently. I have a different confidence because I know that worst case scenario, worst case scenario, my life is taken, takes me to the best case scenario. I'm before my Father in heaven. Death has lost its power and sting. And here's the thing in this room today, and it is absolutely true for us in this room. If you're in this room and you're a Christian, I wanna urge you and I wanna plead with you. I know life is not hard and I know we can live in this circle for too long and we become bitter and we become discouraged and we become angry and all this stuff, right? The older I get, I either get better or I get bitter. Like the older I get, I get get better or I get bitter. And what determines that is where my focus is. If I just focus on, man, life is hard. This world is coming to an end. Just, what is going on here? Uh, yeah, why would you not get bitter? But if you allow yourself to transfer yourself from verse 35 to verse 37, then you will live differently, you will talk differently, and you will walk differently because you will recognize, although this is a reality, it leads me just to depend and lean more on this, that we are more than conquerors. If you stay here, you'll get bitter. You live here, you'll get a lot better. And that's hanging on God's word. And I'm not saying, and I'm not saying like, hey, read that and life will get better. No, 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 no. What I am saying is read that, believe it, and you'll walk with a different confidence because you'll remember how this thing ends. We've been going, and the band's going to come up and we're going to be done. We've been going through this for 39 verses for eight weeks, and we're closing it off today. Christians, you can claim this. If you're in this room today and you're not a follower and believer in Jesus Christ, which means that you have placed your faith and trust in him, you have to know that you cannot claim this yet. There's a separation. There's a separation between this reality because we're all in this reality. But then who can claim this with confidence? And Christ wants you to be able to claim this with confidence. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to read over you as the church of Jesus Christ, his bride. Just want you to receive these truths. I don't plan on adding any commentary to this, strictly scripture, but it is true. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and bow your head. I want you, as much as you can, please, nobody leave during this time. I know it's tempting. Nobody leave, please. If you're a Christian in the room today, I'm going to read from Romans 8 truths for you that remind you that you are not a victim, that you're a victor. But you have to believe these truths. Listen, Romans 8, 1. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. 
if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together. All things work together. All things work together. All things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. In order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is too condemned? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who raised, who is at the right hand of God, who is indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So who can separate us from the love of God? The answer is no one or nothing. And that is why these truths, church, that you can receive these with confidence if you're a child of God. And this is what makes you victorious. That Jesus died on the cross for you so that death would lose its sting. That Jesus died on the cross for you that sin would lose its sting. That you can stand before man and you can stand before God in all confidence, not perfect, not perfect, but fully forgiven. That no one can bring any charge against you because the judge has already spoken on your behalf. He has banged the gavel. He has gave you the sentence of eternal life with him. And nobody can change that. I don't care what they say about you. I don't care what they whisper to you. I don't care what you say about yourself when you're in the valley of your sin. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then your sentence has already been given. And that is eternal life with Jesus in heaven. Who can separate us from the love of God? It is done. Scoreboard. It is done. So Christians in the room, will you just claim that? You change your perspective from verse 35 to your perspective of verse 37. You are, because of what Scripture says, more than a conqueror because of what Jesus did. But the end of that Scripture in verse 37 is true, too. You can only claim this if you're in Christ Jesus. My Lord, my Lord, you can only claim this if you're in Christ Jesus. Full freedom, full forgiveness, full atonement for your sin can only be claimed. Listen, if you're here today, 
and you find yourself in this verse 35 life in a battle that you feel like you're not winning you will never fight the way God can fight you cannot win a battle without God my desire for you is to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ so that verse 37 can be in reality for you and you can leave here a victor the truth is without Christ you walked in here a victim because of what the stronghold the enemy has on your life if you do not know Christ you walked in here a victim but because of Jesus Christ you can walk out here a victor all eyes closed and head bowed I'm going to ask you if you're here today and you never surrender your life to Jesus Christ and you want to go from a victim a victim of sin to a victor over sin. It's by saying yes to Jesus.